Okay, uh, everybody uh, welcome this afternoon. We will start with the uh, presentation of the projects that have been established in this Science Hack Day Eindhoven 2012. We welcome uh, members of the jury. Uh, Egbert Jan Sol, Marian Schreurs, Carmen Karasik and Peter Knapen. So I think uh, I have to wish you luck and uh, courage in presenting your project in under five minutes. I know it's not fair if you have worked for 30 hours and you have to present in five minutes, but that's how we have to squeeze it in the time. So the first project will be presented. It's called SAGE by Maarten Witteveen, Iris van Dam and Ben Lando. Here you go. Thank you. One second. <laughs> oh. This presentation is brought to you by Premier. SAGE helps users to make choices on the internet and in real life by accessing their physical senses and activity. It brings the control of their data back into their own hands. In 2002, the supermarket Target hired mathematician Andrew Pohl to create an algorithm in order to better market products to pregnant women. In one incident, a father came in angry about a baby-related coupon sent to his 16-year-old daughter. The algorithm had revealed her pregnancy which she had not yet shared with her father. A Duke University study estimates that habits, rather than conscious decision making, shape 45% of the choices we make every day. A recent study published in Psychological Science showed that participants' subconscious neural responses predicted the behaviour of a large population better than their self-reported
There's lots of references. Um, yeah. um, so uh, we, we started by experimenting with uh, these different technological devices to try and uh, get some sort of feedback uh, from the EEG and from the uh, skin conductance skin device. Um, but, but our dreams for what they could do were greater than what we were actually able to make. Um, and so we decided to focus on the concept which we felt we had a stronger affinity with. Um, our aim was to remove the, the user from the system of uh, aggregating data with algorithms from, from your actions on the internet and to bring that back into your own hands uh, by relating that to sort of bio data. Um, I think one of the, the main things about, the main reasons we came to this sort of solution and to this uh, more conceptual suggestion is the makeup of our team. Iris is a neurobio... Cognitive neurobiological psychologist. And uh, I work in, uh, as an industrial designer. And um, I'm a lifestyle ICT student, so... So with our uh, forces combined, I think uh, we can be quite, we're quite happy with this uh, more conceptual idea, um, having played around with the technology and then working on the concept. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe the jury has one question? Or is it clear? We can go up to the next one. Number two. Is uh, on this side. Can we switch to the beamer? Can we switch to the other video? Beamer? It's switching. So this is the project Cam Jam. Yeah, I can already start explaining, so don't worry. So, um, yeah, we're, uh, we're the team who made Cam Jam. We're Arnoud, Harm, uh, Freak, and uh, me, Marcel. Um, and uh, when we uh, made up a concept this week, we thought, what can we do which is healthy and really is fun and engaging uh, for uh, people? And we picked youngsters. So we thought, what if the city would install a skate park where they could skate and they could just go there with their skateboard and all their fancy moves are going to be recorded uh, from all types of angles and it's it's fixed to their personal profile so they can share that with their friends and show how awesome their um, their moves and their skills are to motivate them to come and join in well previously this would be very difficult but nowadays technology became very um, uh, available uh, to do this and we managed to make a scale model of the cam jam uh, over here um, uh, during the uh, hack, uh, hackathon so um, yeah I think the best way to explain is to just use it so um, guys so uh, yeah well normally the guy would propel itself but now they um, they're gonna move around and you see the guy going over uh, tags, uh, readers, which are in the, uh, in the skate track. And they know exactly who is where um, at what time. So they know if you approach the ramp, you're going to do a fancy trick. So you hear like a little click. And, uh, and uh, there's an ex um, you can equip your board with accelerometers, making it very awesome to... Um, uh, to track your moves and eventually well we all always want to record the fails of course so what happens now um, so you go home uh, and, and your skateboard your uh, RFID equipped skateboard well don't don't take it away look I'll, I'll, I'll show you like here is a little sticker underneath the skateboard which is uh, the RFID reader so you go home and uh, you have a, a profile and if we are very lucky, we can see on the screen what they will see at home. 
Like here you see all the cameras, like a top camera with a top hit. You see a little trick camera. You see an overview camera. And there we have the cam jam player. Oh my God, we need, we need a bigger, we need, we need big. <laughs> all right, well, you know, this old technology doesn't work yet. Well, give me, give me the highest you can give me. Is that the best you, is that the best you got? Man. It's, yeah, bring better, 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 better. Yeah, that's, that's more like it. Yeah, do that one. All right. So you come home and you check into your profile. I, th I thought we came home already a couple of times, but. All right. Yeah, we going to no what escape Conf oh shit thanks for the escape all right all right it's going to look a little distorted here and the excitement is 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 it's getting less all right, we have, we have something on screen. And yeah, just hit that one. All right, so we, uh, all right, just, just, all right. So I came home and I see here that I am, had, uh, was on the cam jam um, in the area 51 here. So I hit this and there I see myself from every angle. Oh, I need, I need sound. And so you can take you can take this, uh, and then you can take this video and share it with Facebook to all your friends and motivate them to also come and join them on the um, on the uh, 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 on the court. And just need one one more little feature to explain, because when you play the movie, you can also uh, edit it yourself and go through all the angles to to uh, edit the video just the way you can impress your friends and. Uh, See how awesome you are at skating. So this is our concept. Great. Thank you very much. Questions from the jury? No? Question? How does it know what is the trick that you just did? Well, we uh, oh, microphone. We built in an accelerometer here. Uh, and we actually did a science hack here because we took all the raw data from the Wiimote and we went over in a MATLAB analysis over all the accelerometer data to see how you can analyze which tricks you were doing. So we uh, were able in this weekend to, um, to identify like, I don't know, like six or seven tricks you could do. Yeah. So uh, I think that's... Okay, thank you very much. And we go over to the next one, number three is the power plants it's presenting from this side. And this is by Hiromi, Wilbert and Kasper. So. Sure. Hi, uh, is, are the slides working? Hello? Is it on? Oh, great. Oh, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Hiromi. Um, I'm with Wilbert and Kasper, and we worked on power plants. So when we were thinking of what we wanted to design for this, um, for this hack day and what we thought would be a healthy city is to kind of redefine the way that we get our energy. Um, so for us, we're looking at natural systems and how we can harvest the energy from bacterial reactions to power our digital lifestyles. Um, so how does this all work? Uh, it sounds like it's not, whoa. Um, 
Okay, so my slides aren't really working, but it's okay, I can talk you through it. Um, so how do these fuel cells work? Well, there's a couple of strains of bacteria that release electrons as it decomposes organic waste. And so what you can see right here is an example of what a fuel cell looks like. Uh, we have a couple of electrodes inside the actual pot. And as the bacteria decompose things, um, decompose their nutrients, they release these, this energy. And we can capture that uh, and channel it through into a harvesting module and pump it into rechargeable batteries. So what we built right here is uh, the idea of using compost as power. Uh, we took some leftover Bavaria and mixed that into some dirt, um, put in some electrodes and just began charging. So these are the parts that we're using. It's a, a harvesting module and that's being uh, funneled into the rechargeable batteries. And so if you look up here, you can see the fuel cells that we built. Um, the unfortunate thing about this is that it takes a few days for it to kind of get up to its maximum voltage. So as of right now, um, it's still kind of working, but the, the power is increasing. We should reach our, our maximum peak voltage in a couple of days. Um, and the other, uh, the other example that we wanted to use is actually plugging into plants directly. And so you can see our, our plant over here. Um, and we're using the same sort of methodology for this, but we're trying to play with the idea of, of being able to grow your own food, grow your own plants, but simultaneously get power from that as well. Um, so we have a couple of electrodes inside the actual plant cell, and it's using the same mechanism of the energy, energy harvesting module and the rechargeable battery. Um, we put those rechargeable batteries into a USB device, and, and an example that we have is using that to power your iPhones. Um, and this is just an image of us taking a voltage reading from earlier today. And we can actually check them out right now if you want. Um, test, test this. Um, and actually. Okay, so we're just seeing how much power this plant can, can give us right now. And it's, like I said before, it's still really low, but in a, in a few days it should, should pump up the volume a little bit. So um, we're using AA batteries. Hopefully you can see it. And our, you know, the, our overall goal in the future is to be able to look at places like public parks or backyards and how we can use that as our energy source instead of having to, to drill for things underground. Uh, so. And yeah, I think that's, that's about it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there a question from the jury? Or shall we continue? One question. How long does it take to, uh, before this gets depleted? You need to renew this. Uh, so the great thing about this is once you set it up, it takes about three months before the nutrients die out. So it can, it can last unmaintained for a while. Uh, but that's dependent on size. So if we set up something like a five-gallon bucket, um, that should go for a couple of years. Okay, thank you very much. The next group, Project Lorem, Searching for People. International students, Christine, Gerardo, Pravin, Timus, Martin, and Martin. Sorry, some logistic problems. <laughs> Always looking for the right standard. Uh, 
Um, hi, we're team number four, and um, well, uh, we've developed an innovative software application that provides a web service using uh, open data. The name is Lorem, which in Latin means hello. And well, basically what Lorem does is that it provides international students for a way to connect with other international students. Like, uh, for example, me. I come from Mexico to Eindhoven, and I want to find other Mexican students uh, because I just arrived and I don't know anyone else. Or I want to find Spanish-speaking students, or maybe I just want to go rock climbing, and I want to find students that enjoy rock climbing as well. So I go to Lorem and enter, enter the search criteria, and Lorem will return back all these searches. Uh, it will display them in a Google map, and I can see the people over there and contact them using Facebook. Um, I guess the better way to explain it is actually by using Lorem, which is online right now, and if you have a computer, you will be able to log in with us, I mean, try it yourselves. And the important thing is that we already have some users joining us uh, from uh, all over the web. So um, let's try it. Uh, to connect with us, you will have to go to this link. If, if some of you have a, a laptop or a mobile device and a Facebook account, um, I guess I will leave it there for you just to um, be able to copy it. Um, uh, well, I guess that's enough time, to, I hope. Uh, and then uh, let me just go to my browser. You log in with your uh, Facebook account. Uh, allow us to, uh, well, just continue logging in. Allow. And uh, let me just arrange this. Uh, and, uh, it's um, busy, as you can see. Maybe a lot of users right now are. <laughs> and then you just fill your information. Like, uh, I don't know, let's see, my zip code is 5641TB. I am from the TUE, I'm from Mexico, uh, my date of birth is September, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and uh, let's see, the languages I speak are English, and uh, you have to control click uh, the other languages right now, this is a Better version, control click, other languages that you speak, or if you're an Apple, it's command click. And then just click update. And uh, this is the main screen. It will take you to a Google map. This point over here is um, an approximation of the place where I live. And uh, let's say I want to look for um, a Dutch guy that speaks Spanish, because I want to practice my uh, Spanish with a Dutch guy. <laughs> uh, uh, wait, um, and I want to look in a distance from, uh, I want to cover the entire Eindhoven area, so let's just see, like uh, Eindhoven area, and just click go. And I see a match right now, uh, I just have one Dutch person that speaks Spanish, and I see that it's Marcel, Marcel, Marcel is over there, Hi, Marcel. And uh, let's see, um, he's Dutch, he speaks Dutch, English, and Spanish, and wow, he's interested in sailing and climbing. So uh, I might just send him a Facebook message, uh, well, at him as a friend, and then um, contact him over there, and uh, just get in touch and start a new relationship. The purpose of this is to start um, relationships with students that you do not know. Facebook just allows you to contact people you know, so this is like a different uh, functionality. It enhances Facebook, but it still allows you to use its platform for communication. So, um, yep, see, he got the friend request. Woo! And, and actually, I think someone over here, um, we have, so most of the people that we have right now, we have like maybe 20 users that we got to sign up. and. 
all of them are in Eindhoven except for two of them in Rotterdam and they actually found out just now that they live on the same street. So, <laughs> so he signed up and then he, you know, he just winds his search a little bit and he actually sees right away like, oh, I actually do know him, but I didn't know that he was on the same street as me. So that, that's actually really cool. So I don't know if you have any questions or... Okay, thank you very much. Do the members of the jury have a question? Or shall we continue? The interesting thing is why hasn't it been done before? It's just so... Uh, sorry, I can't it's so logical to do it, so why hasn't anybody done it before? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we just thought about the idea this morning. We didn't have any uh, concrete idea when we first arrived. And we just thought like, hey, we're international students. What problems did we face when we arrived? And uh, this was one of them, and we Googled for something similar, and there was nothing around the web. So we're just hoping to um, maybe fix it a little bit more and launch it. So it's just a matter of time before it's, it's official. Great. Thank you very much. The next presentation is Mood by Daniela Sidash Leonid Ketan Inrun and Huang Ming. So another big group. Yeah. I said Inrun, what must be Iwan? Yes, Iwan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, our uh, project was called uh, is called Mood. And it's hard to get into the mood. I'll explain to you how that uh, it works. Uh, the M has got three legs, and uh, all of those legs um, are uh, connected to a uh, uh, sensor. We work with a, um, a GSR uh, sensor, which is a galvanic skin response. We work with face tracking. Um, we did that with um, the, the website uh, face.com. And the third sensor is the, the heartbeat. Um, and uh, what we um, uh, wanted to do, and uh, we experimented with uh, a mouse, that the GSR uh, response, um, the, the sensor is integrated into the mouse. So it's not uh, all uh, a part of it, but it's integrated. Uh, then we have the four O's of mood which are uh, four poles of your uh, mood status. Um, you see aroused and, and calm, and then we have negative to positive. Um, the calm to aroused is uh, measured with the sensors heartbeat and GSR, and negative to positive is with the, the face detection. Uh, then uh, we looked at uh, theories about colors um, uh, connected to mood, and that uh, we uh, connected with each other. And here's an example of the, the heartbeat in, in graphics. And that's how it, uh, how it works. So it measures the mood of the people, and then it's, expect, uh, it's expressed in uh, art that is uh, beamed on the wall. And uh, when the people uh, see those colors, uh, which are measured every 15 second, seconds, and also hear the sound, uh, which is attached to it, uh, they know uh, how their mood is measured, and it brings something in them where, well, that's my mood at this time, and maybe I want to feel uh, in another way, I want to have a other, another mood. So there is an interaction uh, within the, uh, between the system and uh, the people. So there's awareness um, that might uh, change the mood of the people. Um, and then uh, we have a connection to open data. So all the measurements are uh, put back to the internet and are open data. And there's also the possibility we have made a connection to Twitter and also Facebook, etc. Here uh, you see that. So there is an individual, individual level between mood and uh, the people, and then there is uh, internet used by face.com, but also by uh, getting all the data back uh, on the internet as open data. 
And uh, this way it's uh, the art of uh, happiness, well-being and health. And as you can see, this is the, the map of, uh, of Holland. And uh, we're all in the, the happy mood, so it uh, works really well. Thank you. And yeah, now we'll uh, demonstrate it. Oh, there's a demonstration? Yeah. yeah. Okay, can you uh, come into the light here? Yeah. Can you come here in, into the light? Live demo on stage. Where is the uh, where is the no the CGA? CGA? Can you explain what's going on? Um, yeah, right now we are going to real-time show uh, how the mood detection works. So we use the heart rate sensor with a clip on the ear. Yeah, we're all pretty stressed at the moment, so we'll see lots of lovely colors uh, flashing by. So we'll just wait till we start the application. Um, so we do um, the heart rate uh, combined with the facial detection. The uh, webcam takes pictures every 15 seconds. And from that, uh, the balance of your mood, because the heart rate only uh, can, can give an indication of um, the amount of arousal. But we, if you want to see if it's positive or negative arousal, you need the face detection. So we integrated the, the web uh, application uh, for, for the balance of, of the arousal. And now we all hope it's working, of course. <laughs> and that together creates the, the uh, interactive uh, wallpaper. So you can later also access your data and look at that specific moment. What was I doing? How was I looking? And what color goes with that? So, um, and there's also the lamb. Maybe you can tell a little about it. Well, basically, um, most of our ideas is about uh, application and uh, software. So uh, I think it's quite important that user has a physical thing to interact with. So I sort of uh, hack some materials in this room. I, I use the cups. I use the cardboard to create this kind of like a lamp. But it's more like a, a, li a, li a life plant. So basically, this plant will reflect your emotions. So, for, for example, right now, he's actually um, deeper. <laughs> yeah, and uh, actually, I, I use some LED, but it's not so bright. So, you know, basically, uh, yeah, so if you are very stressful, then this plant will, yeah, heads up. <laughs> and also, we can, uh, like, uh, we can just... Uh, uh, also, we have a, a visualization history. So, if you click on uh, emotional state, I don't know if you can see. Uh, uh, is it is it copy? Okay. So, if I click on uh, uh, well, each circle represents my emotional state at a given moment of time, and uh, color with uh, it represents if I felt uh, happy or if I felt sad. So, if it is uh, uh, an, an a top of the affective space, it means that I was very aroused and. Uh, maybe a bit stressed if it's on the left. And then if I click on a, uh, uh, on a circle, then I'll get a picture which was associated with the state. So that I was staying and presenting here. And uh, yeah, you can see that at, this at that point of time, uh, my uh, heart rate was 70, uh, 67 uh, beats per minute. Uh, and also we play some music, but I'm not sure if it's gonna play now. Yeah, so we can check another side, but it's going to be, well, pretty much the same because I'm staying here and uh, doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, and basically, uh, that is the demo, I think. Yeah.
Thank you much. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Do I see question marks around here? No? Then we quickly go to the next presentation. That's number six. The birthing ideas. And this is presented by Michael, Ferry and Tom. Okay, go ahead. Yes, thank you. We're trying to uh, set up everything. Ah, and it works right away. Well, uh, what we've been doing is, um, well, uh, looking into uh, what should we do today, actually, in these days. Um, so we've been brainstorming a lot, and we wanted to find uh, maybe something that helps us during this brainstorm. So uh, maybe you can show me. Yes, please. Uh, because what, what do we do actually when brainstorming does not help us get new ideas? We, uh, we talk to people, we use uh, normal sources that are available to us. Um, and we are actually interested in something that maybe contributes that we do not have access to. And that is what we're trying to do with uh, this application. And that is uh, to, make, to make it able to visualize the next step, the step that you cannot take with you or your team, and to make a connection that you could not make previously. So you actually want to know, okay, my, my, uh, my concept, how do I get to everything that's hot up around of it? And we want to use social media for that, because that is what's hot right now. That's what people talk about. And they don't only talk about our, well, your concept, what you're trying to find out, but they talk about more stuff. And maybe there is a connection that you could not find using normal resources. And that's what we do right here. Maybe you uh, can explain. All right. The, the idea is that instead of just uh, doing a Google search for, uh, for a keyword, we um, first search for um, a keyword on Twitter and then find uh, all the users that use uh, that keyword. And after that, we try to find uh, different uh, tweets by that user and scan all words that are in the messages. Uh, we rank these words with a very uh, powerful al algorithm. We're not going to disclose it because else, uh, yeah, everyone's going to copy it. And with that um, algorithm in place, we can then uh, make a crosslink between the very living data from social media to very dry data, uh, factual data from Freebase. With that result, we get new concepts and we add, um, we try to find images and we display the images to the user. We made an iPad application for it. I shall run the demo here on the local machine. It's not as fancy as the touchy device, but it'll do. Let's see if you can find it. Resolution is a bit weird, I see, but what I did here, I, I tried to do a search for uh, Science, Hack Day, Science Hack Day 040, and this is what it found. It said Eindhoven Science Hack, working, science, cool, and there are actually three more down here that you can't see. But if I now, for example, say, oh, well, Eindhoven, that's cool. Let's go there. And now it starts to uh, um, ask the Twitterverse, yeah, what else is with Eindhoven and, and people that, that talk about Eindhoven? What else do they talk about? And the web server is getting pretty hammered right now. Maybe you can have a live cam here for the, the iPad app just for completeness sake. Yes, still waiting. Did somebody steal our internet? Well, this is called the demo effect and um, I think there are many people talking about Eindhoven. There are too many, the R algorithm is, 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 is bursting. Maybe you can explain something about your searching techniques. Uh, 
Yeah, what is there to say? Uh, well, at least there uh, are several, uh, well, several uh, separate queries uh, that are being uh, sent to Twitter. So that's uh, why uh, the performance isn't that uh, great yet, uh, because uh, there are uh, tens of queries being done. If each one takes uh, half a second, you still have half a minute. Although I have the feeling that something is uh, not right, because it's taking way too long. I think someone is, is hacking our uh, something here. Are there any hackers here? <laughs> no, I think we can conclude now. Maybe if the demo comes up later on, try to take a look at the iPad and, uh, well, thanks. Thank you very much. Are there questions? A question. The, 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 the images that come up, are they, Hmm. Is your search result limited to uh, times that you can also show images, or can you also just find words? Yeah, we initially tried to just come up with words and come up with uh, uh, tag clouds of words, but um, the, the the visual result is so much stronger than than just the words. There, there, we will want to make a, a 2.0 version that will um, enable you to navigate between these word clouds. But yeah, because of time limits, we just had to come up with images to make it visually uh, appeasing, uh, initially. And we now have an image, of course, because now we switched off. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And um, we go over to the next presentation. And that is number seven, it's called Tornado. Yeah. Hello. So we are a little bit different. We are a group of students from the Design Academy. So we are in master and we came here because like uh, we had a commission about energy with Eon, which is like a Dutch uh, company. And uh, the goal of this uh, of uh, uh, the company came to to ask us like, what if we are all producer of energy? So we started like to research and we work on this project since uh, two months. So. Okay, so it's easy with that. Thank you. So. Uh, we create like a kind of fake company called Energy Ranger. So we work on this, on this tornado energy and so we had a presentation uh, two weeks ago about, uh, so this is like our like way of working. So we thought that in the future you don't have like uh, smoke in top of your house, but tornado like, because like a tornado is able to create energy for your house for, for, for one year. So. We decided like to apply like tornado. What's up? Ah, okay, so this is like models that we did like for the presentation like three weeks ago. So we imagine like in the future context, because our project is really about a, it's more a concept than a real project for today. It's really about uh, in a 50 years or 60 years. And so we imagine like four different ways of thinking this tornado. One is like, Cultivating, so you have like in the future like tornado cultivator, thing like that. Another one is uh, more about like inside the tornado, inside you your house, like, you have like a kind of room where you have a tornado, so you can like be proud of your energy resource, and this is like a, more tornado as a family number, a family member, and this one is more like a tornado as a pet, so it's inside in your garden. And the, the last project is more tornado as the earth of the house. And we came here like to, to develop this uh, force RD, like tornado as the earth of the house. So I will give to Torres. 
so explaining more the concept is that uh, we want to bring uh, wind to our house and not go to, to search for it. So we we want to recreate the the wind power in in the house and uh, and give give it certain conditions when it uh, makes it faster. So uh, this is uh, the the one video we found uh, where um, this is a concept for uh, for wind turbine where uh, placing the the red um, cone uh, on on top of the of the turbine, it makes it stronger because uh, the, the the air goes round and it makes me, it makes it stronger. So we, we we thought also about it that we want to recreate the, the certain conditions when it uh, makes stronger. And uh, another another reference is uh, that uh, uh, some engineers are working now on the concept when they want to uh, create. Uh, tornado uh, out of the waste of the factory and uh, generate energy from there. And um, we, we made a model and we want to show it, uh, but we, we need to film it. So during during these two days, we we wanted to 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 see it visually and to to maybe um, to, to recreate tornado actually in in our scale and um, uh, <laughs> oh sorry. <laughs> And then you, you, you turn it on. Yeah, okay. 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 Uh, well, so we tried to, to make this idea that was a super big turbine, really futuristic and too big for Habitat Home, uh, to an idea that we can re each one of us can reproduce at home. So a way that you in your own house can, you can generate your own energy out of the wind. So in our system, uh, we have a wind powered mail that is taking the energy of the wind over your house and is translating this power to this fan we have in the top of our tornado generator. And all around our house, there is, as you can see here, there is a, a greenhouse made by glass. So uh, thanks to that glass, we are having a really warm space all around the house. And we connect this thermal heating that we have around the house for free, because it's energy of the sun, to inside of the tube. So in that moment, we have a hot energy coming from, from the bottom, and we have a low pressure thanks to the fan that is powered by the wind. So in that moment, becomes a lower pressure in the middle of the tube, and a, a moving a spinning circle of hot air coming up. And in that moment, uh, you have a tornado in the in the middle of your house, and the energy that this tornado produces in the middle can be used for having extra energy without spending any any money or any other electrical energy. Thank you very much. Does the jury have a question? Oh, it's very clear. Okay, thank you very much. We go over to the next team. The retro induction cooking. The team by Paul, Madi, and Felix. Are you using the presentation?
Hi. Do you know that uh, cooking is the one of the top three activities that children like to do with their parents? Do you know that um, actually enjoying what you're eating in one of the most important rules for a good diet? Just to say that experiencing cooking is a part of our living, about our healthy living, about our enjoyable living. And, um, but what we are seeing that in the new devices, they are getting more efficient, more safe, but with less experience. Uh, talking with many guys here, I, I, I understood that I'm not the only one that tried to warm the water, but actually I was warming the other plate because it was the wrong switch. Uh, that never happened with my gas uh, cooking because I see it and uh, actually I can feel it warm and I can hear the sounds. And with all this experience, we try to work on that and myself and Paul and Felix, and we will show it uh, to you. You can also move and touch it yourself if you want. Otherwise, uh, there's something in the video. Yeah, Paul will show it. Indeed. Uh, the biggest problem with uh, induction uh, stoves right now is that they provide no feedback at all. Uh, my mother, who's watching right now, hi mom, is, uh, <laughs> she, uh, she has a gas stove and uh, every time she sees an induction stove or an induction oven, she says, I don't want to use that, I can't, I can't hear it, I, can't, I, I don't know what temperature it is. And she's right, uh, it's very hard to see uh, what the current status is. There's a little, uh, little number from one to nine and that's all the feedback you get. So what, uh, what we, uh, we, we made a little demo, which we're going to show, in which we still use the induction technology, but uh, we've added the lights, the sound, and the tactile feedback that you also got from a gas stove. So uh, I'll redirect you to the demo right now with, with the live TV. Can we have the live TV, or do we need to watch a commercial first? <laughs> ah, right. So here we have it. Uh, here's the induction plate. And we have little tactile knobs. So instead of the touch screen, which, you, which uh, changes the number, you have little knobs which turn it on. And you can also hear a sound. Let me just put the speaker on full. Oh. Uh, I think it's loud enough. The, the knob changes. It, it stops when it's on full. And it stops when it's when it's on, on its lowest setting, so you know exactly how hot it is. Another feature we've added is, uh, is a timer. Uh, normally, that's also done with push buttons, and you have to uh, set a certain number of seconds. In our application, it's just as simple as turning the timer knob, and then uh, you can just select, like, clock how, how much seconds you want it to cook, or how much minutes, but for demo purposes, that's a little boring to see. There we go. So you can see it counting down, and when it's zero, it just stops. Then another application, this is uh, the induction stove of the future, so we wanted to have some mobile connectivity. Oh, I can hold it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's say that we're all the way into the living room, and we've got a cat on our laps, and uh, we're watching the Big Bang Theory, and I, I don't know, did I lift the stove on? I don't know. So we can just click on our iPad app, it's a little hard to do with the microphone and the... <laughs> so we've also provided an iPad app. I hope it works because there seems to be a curse around here. And we can see the, the uh, a status of the, of the application. So we can turn on the heat. And, and if you look in the back, you see that the heat actually turned on. Uh, that's the timer, which you can just see in a roundabout, uh, we can just uh, slide it round and round, and you can uh, set the timer. And if you look in the back, you can also see that the timer is set on the device itself. The two are connected. And it's not just that I can uh, set the settings here, I can also see the settings. So if, uh, Felix, if you can turn it off, then we can see on the iPad that it actually turns off on the device itself. And we've also got a, a second one, which you can also set the timer and the heat. And if you look in the back, you just set the timer and the heat on the actual device. So, thank you. This is great if, uh, if we're just on the couch or if we're going on a vacation. Uh, the one thing many grandparents uh, worry about is 
did I leave the stove on? Uh, now you can just check on our device if we actually leave the stove on and then just turn it off. Simple as that. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much. Does the jury have questions? <laughs> no? no. I, I won't have problems with setting the stove, but once it boils over, I mostly count problems. Do you have a detection for that as well then? That's a very good question. Uh, we actually uh, planned on implementing that feature. Uh, it's certainly possible because we've got just uh, a connection between the iPad and the device and uh, we've got the sensors. So it's certainly possible we've, if there's a temperature sensor and it reaches 100% or 100 degrees, then uh, it's possible to just turn it off. Very good suggestion. Okay, thank you very much. And we go over to the next presentation. Number nine is the Kinetic Energy Harvesting Project. And it's done by Estefanie, Hans and Laurent. Hello, uh, I'm Stephanie, and uh, with Hans and Lauren, we work together in this little project. It's about kinetic energy. So uh, the way I look at it is if you look at this bucket of water, it can be filled up um, with little drops over a very long period of time. Um, it, the bucket is very, very patient, and it's, there, it's just getting filled. Moments like this happening in this world all the time is a kinetic world where is um, natural energy that comes from the wind or the rain or things like that, or things that we do during our daily routine. Um, all this motion is energy, but it goes to waste all the time. Uh, we're not using it. So we wanted to make use of it, and um, th here are some of the things that we do all the time. We don't even notice them, and it's just going to waste. So um, pondering on a keyboard for a long time, and we want to figure out a way to solve this problem. Um, and we designed a kit. And this kit has um, three parts. It's a power generator that captures that energy, um, a circuit that um, collects that energy. It's a very patient circuit, just like the bucket. And then a set of gears and or these other tools um, that you can use just to make different things with it. And we were thinking about what are the things that we can do. We made a lot of wind prototypes uh, to capture energy from the wind. So we have a pinwheel here. Uh, and it's things that you can just go outside and buy, or you can just make out of um, recyclable materials. So we made a pinwheel with, um, we got it from the dollar store, uh, or with a soda can or cups over here. And then we wanted to focus more on everyday lives or things that mean are, uh, is routine for us. And um, we did a rolly shoe that, um, this one, can you explain this one actually? Cause, cause you did it. So actually the point here is that uh, you walk with these shoes all the day so you can also gather some energy. So at the back of the shoe, I don't, oh uh, yeah, of course it's not plugged, but you can imagine then uh, here you can see there is, um, there is some, um, thanks. So there is some uh, piezoelectric foam. So basically every time you compress the foam, you generate some electricity. The electricity is uh, stored into the shoes and then uh, it can be used into some form of energy and then it can uh, light up uh, some light, for example. So um, here is a little trick we use, of course, because we don't have the real foam. <laughs> 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 uh, but that's, that's one way. And then another way for, would be, for example, uh, with the... Uh, so this is our shoe. It comes with a wheel. Uh, so we attach a power generator, a little dynamo, like the ones that come in bikes. and. Uh, can light up the LED. Again, not working. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, you want to explain this? Oh, yeah, I can. Uh, this one, so this one, actually, this is, um, well, this is actually just uh, for a, um, a vinyl a disc. But the idea behind this is that uh, we can use some strong, um, strong force, which is applied for a short moment. So it could be walking on a shoe, for example, or it could be if we pull a string that we attach to a tree. 
then we can uh, um, have some quite some strength for a, a short moment. And basically, what it does is that it oh, okay, it just broke. But uh, <laughs> maybe the other way. Nah, I need some glue. But the other way around, maybe. Uh, with a bit of luck, uh, the <laughs> it will still work a bit. Uh, but the idea is that with a short um, pulse, we can generate some electricity uh, or some uh, energy that is stored in um, some inertia wheel, and then the energy can uh, just uh, be stored in a in a battery like that. So there, here. Okay, see, it turns on. If you can see, there's a little LED here. Maybe. Uh, okay, so it, it goes back to the idea of uh, being able to make uh, prototypes, like uh, not prototypes, but products with uh, things that you can just go um, and get. And for example, this uh, soda can here, uh, vertical axis, you, you will just plug it on your window. It's some, some stuff like that that you just grab and you can run it through the circuit and charge your iPhone with that. And something like this will give you a battery in a, in a week, but it's a battery that you will be saving in a week. Um, okay. Uh, it's it's very cheap too. Uh, so we're comparing it to things that uh, we've been using to prototype before we started developing the kit. And for for the micro micro biofuel cells, um, we had to use a module that is sixty dollars. But the kit is open. So the kit that we made is open source. You can modify it, expand it, or and you can get it for twenty dollars. It's very, it's a very big difference that um, I think uh, will help a lot of people just uh, expand onto it. Okay, thank you very much. Does the jury have any questions? No, and we quickly go to the next one. Number ten. It's called Hack the Wi-Fi Device. And this is presented by Peter Verhees. First, we have to hack the presentation device. Okay, I'll, t I'll do it like this. Um, I am a one-man team, and I, was, I had a question when I arrived yesterday. Can we use the wireless facilities in the devices we have, the laptops, the telephones, to connect to, to each other in a, in, a, in a mesh network? And that's a network that's not real, uh, uh, that doesn't need internet. So c could I create a network because there's so much wireless 
device, so many wireless devices in this world. So I connect with my phone to this laptop, this laptop is connected to your phone, your phone is connected to that one, and then outside the building to the university, etc. It could be a very nice network if this was possible. That was my question. Is it, is it possible? And if it's possible, let's build one. Um, you, need, you don't need internet anymore, that's one of the things. Why, why should you do this? Um, because you can do it, uh, you can use it everywhere, always, uh, if you are on, in a place where the internet fails, lacks. If you are with a group, perhaps you can manage to connect to, uh, through this mesh network to, to the, all the other people. Um, it's fun because uh, it's your network. It's owned by the owners of the hardware. So, um, you, you, you okay, that's fun. And at least the last thing I wrote here, it's free. So why shouldn't we try to do this? Next page. Why not? Uh, I, some people uh, br uh, helped me brainstorming and uh, the they remarked it might be slow and you might have a feeling of uh, old school text messages. So uh, who's interested in this? Uh, internet works, so why should you do that? Uh, commercially, it's not interesting. Uh, manufacturers will even uh, pre pre uh, keep you from doing it. Don't do that, leave it. And it will not succeed because nobody wants to participate because nobody needs it and you need all the devices to create a nice net network. Well, can it be done? Technically, can it be done? Technically, of course, but people advised me out of the box, it can't be done because internet is built in such a way that mesh networking is not a, a good technology to, uh, to, to uh, go around with data. So. You won't get it working, so my proof of concept this weekend was gone at this moment. Great. Uh, another thing, uh, hacking software is very hard. You could try it, but you won't, you won't make it. So I don't have anything to show you except this little story. Should it be considered? considered? I think uh, because in future wireless infrastructures are going to be much more widely, widely provided, um, it is, it, it is much more interesting and it's coming. Also the Internet of Things um, multiplies wireless devices and the connections through wireless things in this world we live in. So the technology, technology will evolve and will be improved. Um, perhaps it could coexist next to Internet, but why should it? Well, I found a lot of pro uh, 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 projects that take use of the uh, mesh networking. Uh, there was one fire, uh, a fire br brigade uh, could save people inside buildings where there were all little um, uh, wireless nodes hanging. So people with carrying a device in their pockets could be traced just by because of a mesh networks and the, the way they can be read out. Uh, I found it back in a plan to, um, to help uh, Libya reconnect to internet when there, when there was no internet. They wanted to drop a lot of uh, wireless devices in the, in the desert so they could get another connection to uh, Libya itself. It's a great idea. I saw the laptop per child. It's, uh, they want to educate children. In Africa they have less internet access points so the children in a, in a class like this they have computers and they can use each other as a mess network to get to this single um, internet bridge. Great. Um, my conclusion. Uh, why not consider to develop a, a sophisticated mesh networking mode for your telephone, for your computer, and a protocol for this? Because if infrastructure fails or flex, uh, you will have immediately another network because wireless things are everywhere in our world and your hardware will be able to join in. Thanks everybody for brainstorming. Thank you very much.
Are there any questions? No questions? Then we go to the last presentation of this range of projects, number 11. It's Natural Nomad. Hello. <clears throat> Is it on the display? Uh, there we go. Um, hi. This is Natural Nomad, and I'm Dan, and this is Javier. And um, are we on a? Oh, hold on one sec. Sorry about that. Um, so we're working with energy as well, and um, specifically, we've been working with uh, tend to work in urban environments and looking at ways to harvest energy from our kind of daily routines and our active lifestyle. Um, but we also kind of thought about, you know, what activities, what about activities that extend into the natural world? Um, do, you know, we're starting to carry our devices everywhere with us, and so it's kind of only natural that we carry them into the wild. Um, so opinions aside, myself and Javier decided to address this realm by tackling uh, the walking stick, um, which is just a tool used by hikers um, on kind of long treks uh, through the countryside. Um, having recently completed the St. James walk through Spain, Javier noted that be between his photos and his GPS, the battery life of his phone and those of the trekkers around were constantly in jeopardy. Um, the and the strain on various hostels due to surges in demand for the charging of their devices uh, was just intense. So we decided to play with some technologies um, that would turn a this walking stick into a power stick. So a walking aid for long treks that helps extend your battery life by harnessing various forms of energy that are generated by your walk. So imagine even coming across a, a digitally stranded wanderer and you're able to share power with. Um, so in any case, we played with um, a few different technologies uh, to make this happen, uh, focusing primarily on the pie something called piezoelectric, um, which is a a, a material that uh, on impact changes its composition and releases a little bit of charge. Now it's a very, very small amount of charge, but kind of, uh, as Stephanie had mentioned, patient circuits, you know, you drop a, uh, water into a bucket for long enough and it's gonna fill the bucket. Um, so we worked with that and as, as well as experimenting with some uh, mechanical uh, forms of generation and um, tried a few different harvester circuits, one of which is Stephanie designed, and it worked great, except for with the piezo, and I think that's because the piezo sensor um, really just, it's, it's put such a little amount of voltage at a time. Um, but at the same time, we did find a circuit that could be used to harvest that energy. We just had trouble storing it. Um, so, um, sorry. So anyway, so here's, we kind of like started mocking up this uh, prototype of the uh, power stick and, uh, you know, some, just some shots of this. But more importantly, we, um, just to show you that these sensors were working, uh, we just have a small little video of, um, So you can see here that just kind of tapping against this piezo, you're actually getting an out, a, a voltage output. Um, so as you kind of you know go on your trek, you're going to be charging a battery, which then uh, stores that charge for use in your device at a later time. Um, and that seemed like the most practical application for it, just kind of hitting the bottom. You know, you have two of them sometimes. Um, and then on top of that. We also were looking at this little generator. This is a Stephanie circuit. Um, and much faster in terms of uh, kind of getting to that voltage uh, that, that, or to that uh, current that was needed. You can see the light was powered. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Other questions from the jury? No? Well, that concludes the presentations. Thank you very much, everybody.
for this uh, load of ideas and projects. And now the task for the jury is to decide which prize goes to what projects. And we have six prizes for happy living, healthy living, best hardware innovation, software innovation, best service design, and overall creative design. We have a place for you in the back where you can sit um, quietly. And I think maybe if you can uh, do it in 15 minutes, then we are not going to be too much out of schedule. Yes. So after the jury uh, has become as got to a verdict, then we will present the prizes in the prize ceremony. So we now have a 15 minutes break.